Hello, good afternoon. My name is Mohammed. Um, I'm going to explain to you about how to get or read a general checklist of the Department of Consumer Affairs. Now, for those of you that don't know what this is, it's a checklist where the inspectors come in and look into it. If you know if you have everything up to date, if anything's missing, if it is, they give you a violation or summons. You know, basically, it's better to be updated and to know what they're looking for. So at least you're educated, and then you know at least you'll know what what to expect when they come in so basically um, um let's get started what you do is you go on google you put in general checklist dca the first link that pops up is going to be a dca business inspection checklist you click on it once you click on it you go to the new york city department of consumer Affairs website and it'll going to tell you use these checklists to learn what our inspectors look for in your industry and help avoid violations basically you read all this and you go on general retail which is english you click on it so once you're in you'll see a general checklist retail for one to four pages and you'll see the price you know like all the items one two three four five and it keeps on going on down basically these are what the inspectors gonna be looking for when they come into your place of business now these general checklists are used for a variety of places grocery stores key food uh, food item stores that sell food um, uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, Payless example Macy's Sears convenience store grocery stores like 7-eleven Dunkin Donuts all those so these are the general checklists where all New York City people they have to follow um, and this is excellent for people that are opening a brand new business that don't know that's why I have this video basically for you know people like them or people that want to review just to, not just to get in their head what the inspectors are looking for to avoid the violations uh, number one a price list with the type of service and the price of those services must be displayed what does it mean basically every item that you sell have to have a price on it that's what the moral is the number two the price must be clearly posted or clearly displayed near the cash register and at the places where the orders are placed what they mean is basically all the items that you sell they have to be some type of list this is not really enforced not that i know of that inspectors do look for but this is something to good to have just in case they do ask for it and you know like if sometimes like some of these items are enforced more often than the other so it's better to have this but if they do ask you this is the checklist you can read to it at least you could help you avoid a violation if the price list states a minimum charge or states a price and up, it must state the reason for the different price and include the range of certain prices. Meaning that if you have a minimum charge on the price, state what the reason is for uh, for those stores. Um, whatever the reason is, just put it down. Uh, you know, like as long as it's reasonable. Number four, if there's a sale or promotion, the pre-sale must also be posted for comparison. So let's say, for example, if you have a sale, if you go to uh, let's say Sears and it says of uh, $60 you have to display what the old price was so at least you know uh, you could have a comparison people could compare okay they're saving $20 they're saving $30 basically that's what number four is asking number five prices for pri uh, pr prices for services cannot be based on gender what does this mean is basically you cannot base be, be based uh, prices on gender so male and female the prices must be same of course you could you could do is uh, like like it tells you over here if, if there's a, if there's a, a, a men's and women's uh, shirt you could just say like you know like a neutral way where it says above the shoulder here below the shoulder here because you know like the way the, the, the stuff is made so you could base on that but not based on gender which is discrimination basically a uh, pricing for good all item offered for sale must have a clearly visible price it could be some type of tag that states this is the price or something if not you could get a violation of that number seven for most items the price must be attached to the item or a sign where the item is displayed for most items which means that you know i have some type of clothes some type of uh, uh, like electronic uh, there should be a tag on it just saying that price uh, if you're in a convenience store or a grocery store obviously you put the sticker on it that says the price that should be suitable enough for some uh, for some some of the stores they do sell some type of gloves or, or, or any type of hat uh, uh, there is a price tag ticking out so that's what basically they want they will see the price if this if, the, if your store's revenue is more than two million dollars or in you're in a chain store you must individually price most food products as well as paper products detergent soap non-prescription drug and health and beauty aid what does this mean if you're making two million dollars a year you basically have to individually price most food products like every item has to be priced basically that's what they mean even detergent soap you know or if you're in a chain store you have to have price good i recommend for this every store your convenience store price everything because you never know what these inspectors a new law that comes in you want to be up to date and so every item that you have each item just clearly display the price uh, number nine milk 
eggs, fresh products, snack food that are less than 5 ounces, frozen food, jars of baby food, and items that are less than 3 cubic inches, under 3 ounces, and under $1 do not have to be individually priced. Must have shelf prices. What does it mean? Basically, let's say if you're selling baby food, um, you could have a shelf price where like one thing tells you this is $1, like you've seen in wall, wall booms or key food, that use more. Some of the items are shelf prices, and all the way in the bottom, like you'll see the like the same uh, same thing. That's what it basically means. The front part it should be the price on it, like on on the clearly displayed on a rack, and all the, all on the bottom should be uh like uh, you know like they don't have to have a price, but as long as the shelf does have it. Basically, that's what they're saying. Sales sign that advertise a person discount. Example: twenty to fifty percent off. Must state the minimum person discount. Both the minimum maximum number must be of equal size. So, example: look at this one. They're saying that you see this twenty to fifty percent off. It should be the same sign, not like this. If you have it like that, please change it now because if the inspectors come in, they see it, they can give you a violation, and you don't want that. No one wants that, basically. And number eleven: sales signs cannot contain any of the following phrases. Our list price. Below manufacturer wholesale cost, manufacturer's cost. Your sales sign cannot have these things, cannot have these praises. So if you do, change it. If not, it's, you know, like make sure if everything's corrected. Business that sells goods and services mu must post a refund policy. Now, what does it mean? For I'll give you an example. If you're in a barber shop, most likely people don't know that if you have it, you have to have a refund policy signed. This is very important. This is one of the things, number 12, that inspectors do look for. They will give you a violation on this. They do look for. Basically, a refund policy must be posted at each registered point of sale or, e or each entrance. Even if the policy is not to give refund, a sign must be posted stating no refunds. So if you have a store, you don't do refunds or anything like that, you just post a sign no refund on next year register or, or, or mostly put it next year register, I recommend. I mean, they, they even said that you could put it at each entrance. Just put it next to your register. At least the inspectors can do come in. They look into it. It could be in a barber shop. It could be an electronics, private electronics store. I'm not talking about chain food, uh, chain stores or big stores. I'm talking about like small stores. Chain stores have their own, uh, you know, their own, own requirements. They, you know, they, they are different requirements from the regular ones. I'm just talking about small retail stores. You have to have a no refund sign next to it. So basically stating that, you know, you know you don't do refund if you know even you do you know some of your customers that you know very well that's different but you have to have a sign posted saying no refunds or if you do just put it on a re on, on, on some type of thing like like states over here the refunds policy must state any or all conditional limitation to getting a refund for example business must disclose any fees charged for refund such as restocking fee some people charge restocking fee because you know you're getting the stuff back so you know it depending on the store if a business will not provide refund for as is items and must disclose that so if, you, if you're buying some items as as is you must disclose that in your receipt that's stating that you know you're buying this as is, there won't be any refund business must also disclose whether the refund will be in cash credit or store credit only some stores will tell you that this refund is in cash this refund will be stored credit it must be displayed on the receipt if, if proof of, of purchase is required for a refund the sign must also say so so let's say for example if proof of purchase like if you're buying something and if you want to refund it, if it's telling that, you know, like, if uh, some type of proof that, you know, that you, uh, it is required, then when you must, you know, doing the reason, That's, there must be a sign, basically, stating over there. Uh, a, a business that chooses not to offer a refund must post a sign that says no free refunds, or words that affect that. This is the easiest one. I mean, just put up the sign that says no refund, rather than going all this. I'm talking about small, uh, small chain stores, like small grocery stores, convenience stores. That one or two, they don't have any chain names except like Eleven. This is basically just put no refund sign. You don't want to if you if you if you want to make your receipt more fancy, just put all that. And make sure everything is abiding by the rules. Most of the time, people do put no refund only because you don't want to have a refund. You know, like put all this and you're missing one of them and you get a violation. So easiest one, just put no refund at all. The sign must state that a written copy of the store's refund policy is available on request. There must be a sign that states like this, something on displayed on. Not only the receipt, but also on a sign that states that yeah, there's no refund. If there are limitation of using credit cards, such as the minimum purchase amount, the policy must be clearly posted at the point of sale or either entrance. So sometimes people have a minimum uh, or, or debit or credit card limit and must be displayed. You cannot just have something that's not displayed and just charge any type of minimum price, with, you know, which is against the New York City DCA violation law. So any type of uh, things you have over there, just make sure you have some type of limitation that states that that this is a five dollar minimum or ten dollar minimum credit card price charge. Number fifteen, receipt must be given 
to customer for purchase over $20 and upon request for purchase between $5 and $20. If it's requested, then the, you, you need that. Uh, basically, that's what this is trying to say. This does not apply to food and drink that is meant to be consumed on the premises, which means that if, if a customer comes in, to purchase over $20 and upon request which means that if they request it you may uh, uh, ask uh, they may give, uh, you may ask them uh, they may ask for a receipt you have to give it to them or upon request for fifty five and twenty dollars for twenty dollars you have to give it to them you have to give over twenty dollars and, and and you know if, or, you know even if the if a customer does request it you can but it has to be between five and twenty dollars if less than five you know you don't have to but I recommend you never know who that person might be maybe he's an inspector better off just to give him a receipt And the inspectors, if they do come in, they will ask you for an itemized receipt. Basically, they want to see each item listed separately in the receipt. So make sure you look into that. I mean, a lot of customers don't know that, but some inspectors, when they say the word, I want to itemize every product, do you know that that is an inspector that's coming in and, and doing a, a checklist on your store? The receipt must also include each of the following. Date of purchase. Remember that. That's, your receipt has to have that. Amount paid for each item, which means itemize every item, one item at a time. Total amount paid, which should be in the end. Separate statement of tax. Every time you tax item, it should be separated. Name and address of store. It should have it on it, on the receipt. This is very important. Inspectors do look into this as well. When you when they ask for receipt, a lot of times people are missing, missing one or the other items. Make sure if you have all this so you don't have to go through, you know, like when, you, when, you, uh, when you're getting your receipt from a manufacturer or something, everything should be listed over there. Because or not, this is going to be a violation. Receipt for electronic that costs more than hundred dollars must also include the make and model number of any item. For electronic stores that you have an item that, you, that costs more than hundred dollars, it must have a make and model number of the item, basically, on the receipt. Uh, price accuracy when the items are scanned is for the people that scan the item. The price must match the lowest item prices, shelf price, sale price, or advertised price. Self-explanatory. If no scanners are used, the price at checklist must must still match the lowest item price, shelf price, sale price, or advertised price. So if you're if you're using a scanner and if you have an advertisement in, in, in you know a, a, the store that you know buy one get one free, the, that thing should able to, to you know pick it up and basically say this is it, the lowest price. Uh, tax cannot be charged on tax exempt items. Now you guys should know uh, some items are taxable, some items are not. For example, condoms. The inspectors they do look for like if you charge tax on condom that's a violation as three fifty dollars if I'm correct and if you plead guilty it's two hundred dollars they do uh, they give you a leniency with regard that if you plead guilty if you do go to court you could you, you know they can always get you on that and saying that you know you did charge items with the inspectors not only they come in they if you if you end up doing some violation they take pictures and they well prepared the inspectors that will come in and give you the violation are the same inspectors you can see in court if the inspector says otherwise then you know that they're not really telling you the truth always record the inspectors if you have a videotape or camera just record the conversation see what they say so if they do give you any wrong information you could use that in the court of law so basically that's what they're asking for uh, just go on New York State fin uh, tax and financial uh, finance I'm sorry and it will tell you uh, about the checklist what they're looking uh, you know like what type of items are, uh, are tax exempt and what times the items are not so basically just look into that if you get a chance if a lay layaway is offered each of the following written disclosures must be provided to consumers provide to accepting any payment over $50 before installment of other description of items include name brand color and model number basically layaway plans I'm not sure what this is I never read into this part um, I don't think so anyone does follow this layaway plan uh, well if you read into it you'll find out what this is um, expired over the counter medication uh, it is illegal to sell over-the-counter medication after the expiration date of the label self-explanatory and this is it if you guys have any other questions or comment please like subscribe I will always uh, glad to help you guys out if you have any confusing about New York State general checklist uh, please um, again uh, email me comment on it I will get back as soon as possible thank you for your time guys and have a wonderful day